And here we go on another adventure. We're at Inskip Point this time. We're doing Fraser Island. We've got a week, well, a couple of days, four, four or five days over here. We've just made the long journey. Magically appeared from Canberra to Fraser Island. We've got our trusty 80. It made it all the way. No problems, which is great. 79, my brother and his Navara. We've never actually done Inskip Point, so we're just at the car park and we're just airing down here because we don't know what it's like over there. Never done it. Last time we did it, we did Kingfisher Bay. This time we went here, quicker, easier, cheaper. So we'll go and uh, get over, get out, hopefully not get bogged through this notorious Inskip Point, but we'll see. The sand was so much harder at Inskip Point than we thought. None of us got bogged. As soon as we came out, the barge was there, so we didn't get a chance to film anything. We headed straight to our camp as soon as we got on the island. So we survived our first night at camp. We stayed in zone one, because it's closest to Inskip Point. A couple of dingoes through this area. Last time I come, this was the area where I seen most dingoes too. So, zone one, great. Seen a couple of whales out on the beach this morning. Flew the drone. I might only just got a couple of snips of them, but you'll have a look, they were so hard. I was like one and a half Ks out off the beach. That's how far out they were. A couple of dingoes, there's another one here. We're now packed up camp. It's like oh, 10 o'clock maybe, I'll tell you. 9.30, we're gonna go head straight to the west side, which is our next camp, set up camp, and then work out what we're gonna do from the day there. Unfortunately, I didn't catch any of the whales along this section of beach, but if you hold on to the end of the episode, you will actually get quite a good view of some whales. I did manage to get a mother in its calf, and they kept preaching constantly, and it was amazing to watch. The entire time we're on the island, we're greeted with perfect weather, as you can see. We had one day where it was a little bit windy, but still sun shining, no rain. Dingoes can get a little bit too close for comfort. On Fraser Island, most of the main beaches, you can actually drive at 80 kilometers an hour. Best time of day to drive, is always when it's low tide. As you can see, the beaches are nice and hard and firm, easy driving on the car. Most of this is always in two wheel drive. The only time we really hit four low was when it was the real soft, boggy sand. Take it slow coming up to the creek crossings as some of them do have rather large ledges. When driving the inland tracks, the speed limit is generally 30 kilometers an hour. The reason this is, is because they are skinny, narrow tracks and you will have traffic coming both directions. We took the most direct line from east to west and it took us approximately an hour travelling the speed limit and slowing down for the bits and pieces that we needed to. Made it to the west coast and the tides were perfect. Morning, morning, morning. Day two and a half on the island. We'll go with two and a half magically appearing here. Stayed on the west side last night. It's called uh, Bell Creek. We didn't do a hell of a lot yesterday. Rolled in set up camp, went for a drive up the beach, had a little look up there, and then the tide came in and we were sort of blocked off, we were just secluded. There was a little creek there that had salt water running through it and just up there you can't actually get any further. But we're uh, today head over to Eastern Creek. So we've got Indian Head, Nicola Rocks, which are the main ones that everyone sees over here. You get a couple little shots of us doing things. We might have a few stop offs during the day, but we're looking good. And this is our campground. Beautiful. Massive. You could fit oh, 20 cars in here. There's like three or four of these big open areas. We'll go hit the road and get over to the northern point. This is the other type of track that you will get heading from east to west or west to east. You'll get these nice open dual lane tracks. The reason you get these is there's a lot of people with caravans on the island surprisingly. 
and they will head over to this west coast because everybody wants to get that beautiful sunset over the ocean. Now this is Indian Head. As you can see by all the ruts and tire marks through here, the sand is a little bit softer than the rest of the beach because you are going uphill, it can make it that little bit more difficult. I chose to engage four low. Gemma, she went in four high. Luke also went in four low. When we came back through Indian Head, we did actually see someone getting bogged, so it is a bit more deceiving. Throughout the island, there actually are a few waste disposal sites like this. They're always fenced to keep the dingoes out, which is very, very handy because you tend to accumulate rubbish very quickly. The entryway to the infamous Nagala Rocks. We had to wait for a couple cars to come through this and then we had people telling us that it was very boggy not to stop and there was actually someone already stuck. We had a handheld UHF which made communicating from front to back of Nangala Rocks a lot easier once one of us got through. It was finally our turn and little to say I was not hanging around to get bogged in this place. Once I went through, realised the sand wasn't as soft as everyone said, we all made it through relatively easy. So we're just looking for our camp. <clears throat> we're in the northern camp zone, right up near the point is uh, no good. There's a couple sand dunes here that you crawl up and try to find your camp, so we're just trying to get up. The sand is... Uh... The only reason Luke couldn't get up was his tyres were just letting him diff out and it was just taking all his momentum. I was actually trying to fly the drone to go and see the whales because there was a few more breaching out in front of us. As I was on the way out looking, I came across this nice little school of fish. I believe they're tuna and they look to be decent size. Now looking at it, they were swimming straight at where we were fishing previously as we were fishing off those rocks. Let me know in the comments when you think it is the best time to visit Fraser Island. I think we nailed it with the end of July as it is whale migrating season and the weather is just warm enough for us southerners. The sand is hard and not too soft from the heat. Morning. <coughs> Good morning. This is camp spot. Ah. Uh... I think it's zone 9. We tried the northernmost point up there. Super windy. Horribly, horrible wind. So we come back around the corner into the next part of zone 9. And um, yeah, found these little gems. They're awesome. Got little entryways like this. This is just an easy one. We we're playing around on a few yesterday. There's a couple real hard entries. Super soft sand, which you would have seen. I walk you over into this camp. So you can see it's sort of shielded by the wind too, which is great. I'll show you our little camp spot, which a lot of people, I don't know why people don't talk about this. Like, look at what we've got right here. And then you'll just walk over this little hill. Now 
only knew our camp. We finally managed to lock onto these whales with our drone. It was amazing just sitting there watching a mother and her calf continuously breach through the crystal clear ocean. There was a good sized pod of these whales, but we couldn't take our eyes off this mother and its calf. After spending a good half an hour watching those whales, we packed up, jumped in the cars, started heading back down south. It was our last proper day on the island, so this was the day we are going to see a few of the sites down the east coast. This is a whale carcass that we'd seen a couple days prior, passing it. We thought on the way back through we'll stop and have a look. I couldn't believe the sheer size of this thing. You can't go past the famous Mahino wreck without having a quick stop in and a quick little look. This time, I actually did wander in a little bit further than I did last time. Get right in there and have a good look at it. It is incredible how big this ship would have been in its prime. Jump back on the inland tracks and we're heading into Lake Mackenzie. Key tip I can give you with these guys, make sure your suspension in your car is well set up for comfort because it will make driving these tracks a whole lot easier. Driving to Lake Mackenzie is a pretty smooth, easy drive. It is one way there, one way back to Yurong, which is the easiest way to access it. You will go past Central Station on your way back to Yurong, which is a good little visit. We found it took us as about half an hour, 40 minutes there, and then half an hour, 40 minutes back. You will arrive at Lake Mackenzie Car Park, which has plenty of parking for everyone. There's toilets and amenities there for everyone to use. There's a small walk down to Lake Mackenzie itself, but it's easy going both to and from. Did you do that? Dad. Yeah. Yay. Lake Mackenzie is the perfect place to go sit down and relax. You can finally get down there and after a couple days camping, it's the perfect place to have a good wash. It reminds me of the Whit Sundays with the perfect white sand, the crystal clear blue water and it's nice and warm. And just like that, we're back home. Magically appearing wherever we go. Now, we didn't film too much overall on the island, more just relax. And last night we stayed in zone two, 
little to say we had a couple of dingo problems. There was a dingo fight just before we went to bed, so it was breeding season. There was a female that came walking into camp. She was a little skinny. There was two young males by the looks of it. They were very territorial and um, chased her down and tried to attack her. This was all within our camp. Then later in the night, the female was just walking around. She was very placid, very tame. She was just looking for some food. We didn't feed her because you don't feed dingoes. Then my brother, it was about 10.30, um, he got footage on his phone. He just went out to go pee and um, the dingo, one of the boys come back and sort of followed him. He was following him as he was walking back to camp, like as he was walking back to the swag. He told it to get lost and it actually sat down and growled at him like it wanted to attack him. He said every time he started to turn around and try to walk a little bit quicker on him. So. Zone 2, I've only ever had problems with territorial dingoes in Zone 1 and 2. Both times I've been Zone 1 was a male, Zone 2 another male. Everywhere else I've been pretty tame. And then the same night, about oh, 1 2 o'clock, they must have got, they must have found a female again. They must have, two males must have come through camp and found a female because we heard them fighting and yelping and it went on for like 15, 20 minutes listening to these dingoes. So, like I said, the only problems I've ever had zone two, zone one, which is right around Yurong, so the busiest sort of part of Fraser. We jumped off the island on Friday, we headed down, we just stayed in Brisbane just to get a nice little stay close, close enough to Fraser. Then we jumped from, jumped in the cars yesterday, left Brisbane and drove all the way to Canberra. So it was about a 12 hour drive, but we got home last night. The reason I did that is because i got to clean this car and the other car. I've got to have a big day cleaning cars. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll catch you on the next one.